because you've lost some very big names. We certainly have. I mean, uh, obviously, as a Labour person, I'm devastated by the result. Mm. If we get the trajectory that it looks like uh, we've got. Um, I'm sad for a lot of reasons. You know, there are so many reasons. I mean, for a start, negative campaigning seems to have won. Um, then we've got the fact that nationalism has been whipped up and is now out of all control and could break up our country and will be out of the EU and our economy may be decimated. So, you know, there are so many reasons. Apart from over that, and, it's a bright uh, morning. Oh, yeah, apart from that, <laughs> all good. My heart bleeds for Edwina's mm. sore throat. What mm. am I saying? Uh, Chris Yoon, meanwhile, your own leader faces you know, I mean, his future hangs by a thread, doesn't it? Well, it's, it's been an appalling night for the Lib Dems, and there's obviously going to have to be a lot of thinking about what went wrong and how to put it right and how to reconnect with uh, a lot of our supporters. Well, but being I in think one of the things. might have been the biggest mistake. Well, actually, there have been examples of successful coalitions, even in the UK. So, for example, when uh, Jim Wallace led the Scottish Liberal Democrats into coalition in the first term of the Scottish Parliament, we emerged from that coalition with an increase in support. So mm. I think it was more political mistakes which were made in dealing with this particular coalition and with this particular campaign. But I would pick up what Una said. I think that the biggest single change in this election, the really worrying thing, is that because of the electoral system, mm. we have doubled the number of SNP uh, uh, MPs. So the reality is, for example, the SNP got fewer votes than the Liberal Democrats, uh, but they're going to have 56 mm. MPs. The Liberal Democrats had 7.5% uh, of the votes, nearly double the number uh, of votes of the SNP, and yet we'll only have eight. UKIP had 12.5%, even more than either of them, and we'll have only one. Before we get and on this is, frankly, Chris. just crazy. And of course, before the we, before we go Before we go into electoral reform, before, 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 before we go into that, I just want to ask you cost, one quick question. Cost, no, 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 no. Is one, going to be the okay. end of this the is, union. This is a different debate. Hello. Yes. One quick question <laughs> to you, and one quick question to Una. Next leaders, of you, Nick Clegg's not going to survive. Well, I suspect Ed Miliband's not going to survive, so who's it going to be? Well, it, it, we'll have to see who the runners and riders are, but uh, Norman Tim Lamb was re-elected and would be a very good leader. Tim Farron was re-elected and would be a very good leader. Um, those would be two okay. obvious runners. Yeah. Um, I don't know, unless the, an announcement has been made, you know, just now. Um, we haven't heard um, that Ed Miliband is standing down. I passionately supported Ed Miliband um, because I thought He's he brought the right policies but the point is Edwina you know it's their job to ask me to you know to start putting runners and riders forward I'm not at that stage mm -hmm. I want to know what the British people have finally ultimately said and then we'll decide what we do know is that every independent pundit said Ed Miliband had a good campaign we know that was the feeling on the ground okay. and They're so you know we have no absolutely right which is why I'm saying I want to hear what the voters say in total and then we'll have that conversation